world she traveled. And a woman who made a difference. Acrylic Kids gift to our community. My name is Jean Bassett. Spell it. J-E-A-N-B-A-S-S-E-T-T. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so you've like done a lot of charity work. So what motivates you so much? Well, I think you get started on doing something to help somebody. You talk about charity work, so I'm, I'm talking in that direction. If you start at some kind of a project that you enjoy to do something useful for the community, and it goes real well, I think you have a feeling of satisfaction. So the next time somebody asks you to do another project, you say, oh, the last one was good, it was wonderful, I'll do it again. So you get started and it just goes one thing after another. Yeah, that's, that's the school bell. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, you, you were in a, the, you were the first president for the council. Of the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, the Chamber, of, Chamber of, of Commerce. Yes, yeah. that's true. I How does it feel? Well, I was sort of scared. Mm -hmm. But it got better as time went on and I got used to the job. Uh, yeah, when you first take on a job like that, it is, it, there's quite a bit of responsibility to it. It is something you haven't done before. So you're a little apprehensive and you hope that you're doing things the way you know, people, uh, that you're living up to people's expectations. But I did enjoy it. It was a nice thing to do, and it was a time when a lot was going on in La Crosse. It was just before the mall was built, and there was a talk of building the mall, mm -hmm. and uh, there was talk of developing down by the river. There wasn't any Radisson Hotel yet then, but they were getting ready to do that. So there was a lot going on, and the Chamber of Commerce was a busy place. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Radisson Hotel, weren't you rewarded there or something? You had a reward there? Um, a boss of the year? Oh yes, that's right. Yes, yes. I, I did receive the boss of the year award. That was, that was Can nice. you tell us about that? It's a long time ago. I guess uh, I guess some of our employees um, enjoyed working at our place, and they thought that I was fair and uh, cared about them. I think that, that was very important. I care mm -hmm. about the people that work at our place, and uh, so I guess the, this is from what I can remember. I think there was a it was a dinner event, and I received received an award. Yeah, you you've received a lot of awards. How does you've that been, feel? You've been leading yeah, up, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, you are a very famous person. You've had like ten articles on you. How does that feel? How do you feel about that? I I really um, I don't feel it. Uh, because I was going to do this and I had a letter from people in the League of Women Voters asking me to uh, bring along some material on things I had done. I started through my files and so I came across all of these things and I thought, did I, did I do all that? <laughs> so it's not something that I was ever impressed by at all. It's something I appreciated. You know, you, when somebody gives you a award or expresses some kind of approval of what you've done, um, it's something that I appreciated, but it's, I was never very impressed with myself. Mm -hmm. Why weren't you? I mean, you've done a lot of good things. You weren't happy, or I would think you were happy. You're a good interviewer. Uh, yes, I was happy. I guess I was I was awfully busy because I was running a business at the same time, and then I was doing these doing various uh, things in the community. And yeah, I was happy. But I when you're when you're doing things like that, I don't think you have a lot of time to think about yourself. Uh, I was concentrating on getting all the jobs done that I had to do and keeping on schedule and getting every place on time. I hate being a, a late person. And uh, so I wasn't thinking about myself. Um, you were involved in the uh, Red Cross Bloodmobile. What is that? 
I didn't do too much with the Red Cross Bloodmobile. I guess I, I did. I worked as a volunteer a few times. I was more involved, though, in the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've been on the board of directors of the Salvation Army in La Crosse for many, many, many years. Um, and I'm a life member. And um, they, they do so many good things for people. Mm -hmm. You're a board member for a lot of things, like the YMCA and stuff. Yeah. What do you do? Well, when you're on a board, you are one of a group of people who have been selected probably because they're people who understand the needs of that particular or organization and can help it uh, do the successfully operate and do what it's purpose is to do. And uh, so you usually meet once a month and you talk about its projects, the things that it's doing, and talk about what is going well and what maybe needs to be improved and how the community is responding to the work of this organization. You know, you're sort of a planning group. Did you enjoy doing that? Yes. That, that, that's interesting. That's enjoyable. Why did you enjoy doing it so much? Well, one of the things is that you work with a lot of other really neat people, other people who are community leaders. You learn so much from serving with the community. You learn, um, you end up a, a much better person as a result because of the things you learn from your co-workers, from the other people that you work with. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was lacrosse like when you were doing all this charity work? Well, lacrosse was much less progressive than it is today. I moved here a long, long time ago, and it was just kind of a quiet little river town then without much going on. But um, lacrosse has developed and grown a great deal over the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, Part of it is due to things like like the malls coming in and the building down the river of the Renison Hotel and La Crosse Center. And also, it's there are a lot of good people who live here who um, are interested in making it a good town. And we have a lot of human services here, organizations like, like the Family Y and other things of that sort that work to make it a good town. And it, La Crosse is a particularly good town, too, because of the fact that, for instance, we have such good education, both in our public schools, where you are here, and the fact we have two universities and a college. We have two remarkable health care facilities, far beyond what most communities have. So it's a, it's a great place to live. Yeah. I was um, informed that you got a degree in music. That's, That's why true. you were in the radio. That's true. Why? What made you choose music? You were a pianist, weren't you? Actually, what made me was my mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you all had to take piano lessons in practice, I was one of those kids who I was treated to piano lessons but starting when I was very young. She wanted me to turn out to be a professional pianist which didn't quite materialize, but I had a very good education in music. And so I uh, had an opportunity at several good jobs relating to music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got, you went to uh, like Minnesota, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I went to college at, Car at Carleton College in Northfield, Minnesota. And after that, I lived in New York City and worked for ASCAP, which is the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. And they license music. They control the rights, the performance rights, and costs uh, for people who compose music. And I worked there for a couple of years. Do you do all these charity cases by yourself, or do you get help? Oh, we, they, there's no such thing as doing anything by yourself. Yeah. I, I've worked with lots of ni nice people doing things, but nothing by myself. Has lacrosse changed for your liking over the past oh, years? yes. It's wonderful. I, I don't care too much for big cities. I enjoyed living in New York, for example, just because it was interesting. It was a different thing to do. But I like smaller communities. And uh, I, I love lacrosse, but I, uh, it, uh, to me, it's a, it's a nice size. 
Tell me when you lived in Colorado. I lived in Colorado for eight years after I after I lived in New York, and I uh, lived in Colorado Springs. And I worked uh, in a radio station. I started out as a music librarian. I kept track of all of the the records that came in for the disc jockeys. Kept them filed and keeps kept them in order. And I planned the music programming. And then I became the program director. And uh, then I went into the business end too. Did you enjoy it in yes. Colorado? Yes. Yes. So it's it's a beautiful place, Colorado Springs in the mountains. Uh, it's a different kind of it's a stark be beauty with the with the grand mountains, uh, but on the other hand, it doesn't have the wonderful trees and flowers that we have here. So you were doing all this stuff. Did you ever feel overwhelmed or at times, outstretching yourself? Yeah, that's a very very wise question. Oh, at times, yes. Uh, I guess if you, my reaction to times when I felt overwhelmed was just to sit down and study the situation, really try to better understand what I was doing, what I wanted to do, what I was expect, what was expected of me. And the more you understand it, the harder you try, the better things go, and then, then you aren't quite so overwhelmed. Uh, going back to your mother, what was she like? She uh, was pretty. She was very bright. Um, she had, would like to have been uh, a liberated woman by, I guess that's what we call women nowadays who are involved in jobs and business. But it, it, she, that was be her time was back when women still were housewives and stayed at home. She was she was very bright. She didn't know much about business, but that was kind of typical of the time, too. Uh, you, oh, go ahead, Ryan. Do you think that people expect more of you now that you keep on getting involved in so many activities? They might, yeah, they probably would. It's, I guess it's something to live up to. Uh, I, yeah, I guess you don't want to disappoint anybody since hopefully people feel I've lived usefully and I wouldn't want to disappoint anybody. Uh, what were the women's roles back uh, when you were doing all this charity work? Was it like a lot different from now? Well, of course I was doing all this charity work starting back, you know, uh, maybe 30, 35 years ago and, and I'm still doing those things. I'm still, I'm still serving on a number of boards and doing a lot of different jobs. In fact, from here I'm going to a Salvation Army Committee meeting and board, and board meeting. Um, um, I'm trying to think, what, what, was, what was the question now? Uh, were women treated different 35 oh, yeah. years ago? I had good advice from a, from a boss of mine because when I, years ago, women didn't play as big a role in, for instance, running a business. And, uh, but I seemed to be able to do these things. And I had a boss who said to me, um, just be one of the boys. Don't feel you're less competent and don't be, for heaven's sake, don't be bossy. Just, just be one of the bunch. Just get along with everybody. Just be a, fr a friend to everybody and work well with everybody. Like everybody and they'll like you. Which was good advice. Can you tell us more about your radio career? Well, after uh, when I came here, we bought AM radio station WLCX. Uh, and uh, we had a very small staff, so we all did a number of different jobs. Um, and I was the program director and um, and business manager. That is, I uh, handled the incoming uh, cash from the sale of advertising, and I paid the bills and did things of that sort. And uh, uh, so I, and then I, after a while, I. Uh, went into sales and started calling on businesses around town, selling them advertising on the radio. 
and I never thought that I would be a salesman, but it turns out, much to my surprise, I, I enjoyed it because I liked the people that I saw. It was fun to meet new people around town and uh, to work with them to help their businesses do better through good advertising. Uh, ultimately, um, the manager of the station died and I inherited the job of manager. Mm. Yeah, so did you inherit all, all the business? Were you? No, I, I was co-owner of the business. And I, when, when he died, uh, his wife inherited his holdings, and when she died, their son inherited it, but he wasn't very interested in working in the business, so then we sold it. Mm. Didn't you, like, get a WL? XR? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we put a, an FM, the FM station WLXR on the air. Uh, this was before there were very many listeners to FM, which may be hard for you to mm -hmm. imagine now that everybody watches it, listens to FM. But there weren't very many listeners to FM, so it was um, a, 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 a somewhat of a challenge because you put on Put, put the station on the air and ran programming that you hoped everybody would enjoy, but it was hard to sell advertising until you built up an audience, and you had to wait a while for people to really get into listening to FM. But um, over a period of time, more and more people did, and it, did, it went well. So your job was harder with the F W. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, it was. It was. It was two stations to worry about. The AM station was doing well and we knew FM was going to be a, a big success, which it was. Did you get paid more for doing two? No. <laughs> no. That, I, I made the decisions on who got paid what and I did not decide to pay me more. What got you started in doing all these extra activities? <clears throat> you mean like community service? Mm -hmm. Oh. Somebody would ask me to do, I guess the first thing that happened was uh, somebody that I, a person that I knew, and he was a business owner in the community, called me one day and said, would you like to serve on the board of the Salvation Army? And I thought, oh, I wasn't sure, but I wasn't so sure about this. I didn't know whether I knew enough to or whether I would be a good board member or whether I would like it, but uh, since I never said no to very many things. I said, oh, sure, I would love to do that. And so I, I did. And I, thereby come, we come to a joke. Because the next person came along and said, well, she's serving on the board of the Salvation Army. I'll bet she would like to do such and such. So I got invited to take on some other job. And it went on from there. <clears throat> well, I had a, a secretary in the office who said, Jean, you don't know how to say no. And I said, really, I don't? And so uh, one day I came to work and she called me over to stand by. She said, you stand there by my desk. And I said, yes, what's up? And she said, now repeat after me. No, no, no. She said, you just, you've got to learn how to say no when people ask you to do all these things. Uh, if you would to have to say one thing about charity work, what would it be? Like one word to describe charity. Uh, one word. Well, how about this? Uh, yeah, okay. It's gratifying. Um, it's enjoyable to do. important. Yeah, when you help people, it makes you feel better. Okay. So, um, where do you go to do all these charity works? I mean, do you just stay in La Crosse? Do you stay mostly, in mostly. Yeah. Um, but the only thing that took me out of La Crosse a whole lot was I served on the Mississippi River Parkway Commission. Now that's a group of people representing 10 states along the Mississippi River, all the way from, from uh, 
up in Minnesota, northern Minnesota, all the way down to New Orleans. There are 10 states that border on the Mississippi River. And uh, this is the group that is responsible for the building of the Great River Road. And you're familiar with the Great River Road, which is a beautiful drive up and down the river. So I served on that board. And uh, I was a commissioner from Wisconsin, commissioner they called it, from the state of Wisconsin. And uh, I became state chairman. And for that, I did traveling. I went down to Madison a lot, and, uh, up and down the river somewhere. But that's about the only thing. Oh, the other, only other thing took me out of town was I was on the board of the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. I was vice president. So take me to meetings out of town. What's Otherwise, I just stayed at home and was happy to be here. What's your favorite community service that you do or have done, and why? Hmm. Well, I enjoyed the United Way a great deal. Um, that offered a lot of opportunities to help many different people in other organizations. You know, the United Way collects money that is then distributed to the to the Boys and Girls Club, the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, and you know, all the different organizations. I guess that might have been. The Salvation Army, I've served in so many capacities with the Salvation Army, and I like that very much. Weren't you, um, uh, Miss Oktoberfest luncheon? Yeah, I was I was Mrs. Oktoberfest back in 1989. Didn't you, um, weren't you part of the Maple Fest? Or? Maple Leaf Parade? Yeah, yeah, yeah I was, I was uh, Parade Marshal in 1976. It's a long time ago. So you did a lot of things. Yeah, I did a lot of things, yeah. So you still take an active part in today's society? Mm -hmm, I do. As I mentioned, I'm going to a Salvation Army meeting in a few minutes from Israel. Um, and I serve on the board of the Bethany St. Joe Corporation. Bethany St. Joe operates a number of uh, nursing homes and housing facilities for senior citizens. And um, I belong to the Downtown Rotary Club. I enjoy that. Uh, that keeps me busy. I am active in Downtown Rotary. And, uh, oh, what else? Oh, I have quite a few things going on. Um, I've read that you've helped save an elderly man's life when he had a fainting spell and he hit his head and like, oh. had a concussion or something? Oh, well, I deliver mobile meals. That must be what you're referring to. I'm not sure whether I saved his life. But yeah, we, we, we one time when you deliver meals to shut-ins, uh, you don't know what you may find sometimes. And I remember uh, my friend and I walked into a, one house delivering meals. And here was ni the nicest gentleman he walked. He lived alone, his wife had passed away, and he lived alone, and he always wore a long sleeved white dress shirt and a tie, just every day of his life, living by himself, just because he had pride in his appearance. And here he was, laid out on the floor, and his head was in a pool of blood, and so we called for help, and he had just tripped and fallen and knocked himself out. But otherwise, otherwise he was all right. So I saw you, he could have been seriously hurt. He could have been, yeah. Mm. yeah. That's why we called for help. Did he ever thank you afterwards? Oh, he was awfully nice. I'm sure he did. Uh, did you ever get married? Yeah, mm. I, um, I married a businessman here in La Crosse. He was, he was a general sales manager for the Erickson Bakeries, which uh, preceded, they were earlier owners of the bakery, which is downtown. And. Uh, so he was, uh, he was, he managed sales for that company, and uh, so we uh, we lived in a Twindo on 28th Street for many years. And then he uh, got sick, and then he had a heart attack, and then he struggled with that for a while, and finally he passed away. Mm, I'm sorry. 
How does it make you feel doing charity work? Uh, useful. If you don't keep moving ahead in life and taking on new challenges, new opportunities, you, you're not you're not really living, you're really not going any place. You, you have to keep going and doing good things or you, you become a useless person. Okay. This podcast brought to you from across Wisconsin by the Cooler Kids at Longfellow Middle School in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.